come with me on a journey, a journey into the past, a journey into the life of a man who would change everything. This man is Jesus. Emmanuel, God in the flesh. We are going to do the resurrection eggs together today. I hope you will enjoy this journey with me. Let's look at these eggs and see what's inside and what we can learn about Jesus in them. This first egg is blue. And as we open it up, we see a little donkey. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, just as an important man would. And when he did, the people threw their coats on the ground, they threw palm branches, and they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were celebrating him as their king. They were hoping that he would be their king on earth, but Christ had a bigger plan, a better plan. Not everybody wanted Jesus to be their king. And some of the men of the city, the important men of the city, were angry. And so they wanted a helper. They wanted a man to help them get Jesus. They wanted to kill Jesus. And so they found Judas Iscariot. He was one of Jesus' disciples. And they told Judas if he would help them, that they would give him See that? Money. People do many things for money. They told Judas they would give him 30 pieces of silver if he would help them get Christ. And so Judas agreed. And Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Before the men came to Jesus. Jesus had a special dinner with his disciples for Passover. When he was in the upper room with his disciples, he had a cup, this little cup. And the Bible says he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, the disciples, and said, drink of it. Yes. For this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. That covenant is a promise Jesus was making. Jesus was getting ready to do something incredible. The disciples did not yet understand. But Jesus wanted them to remember this very special promise that he was making to them. It's an important time. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And in the garden, Jesus prayed. He knew that what was coming was going to be difficult. And he prayed to God the Father. And he asked that the cup, this, what was coming, could pass from him. But he said, I will do your will. Christ was willing to go to the cross for us. The men who wanted Jesus to die came and took him from the garden and they delivered him to the soldiers. Let's see what's inside the green egg. A whip. The Bible tells us that the soldiers whipped Jesus and they pulled out his beard. They did not treat him well. They hurt him and he bled. He did that for, not for something he had done. He did that for our sins. When Jesus finished praying in the garden, the men who wanted him dead came to get him. Let's see what's in the egg. A whip. The men took him to the soldiers who beat him with the whip. They beat him so hard that he bled. Jesus' disciples were afraid. Let's 
see what's in here. It's a rooster. Why is there a rooster in the story of Christ? Well, the disciples, specifically Peter, he said, Christ, I will not desert you. I will stay with you. I will follow you. And Jesus told him, Peter, you're going to deny me. He said, no, Lord, I will not deny you. And Jesus told him, you will. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And you know what happened? Peter was standing by the fire and people said, oh, you're a Jesus follower. And remember, Jesus was being beaten and Peter was worried. He didn't want to be beaten. He didn't want to be arrested. And Peter said, no, 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 I am not. And Peter did that three times and he heard the rooster crow. And the Bible tells us that he was sad. He went away sad because he had denied his Lord, his friend, his Jesus. What's in the next egg? This is a crown of thorns. Now we know that the real crown of thorns that Christ wore was made of thorns that would pierce his skin and go down deep into his head. The Bible says that the soldiers took Jesus and they put on him a scarlet robe after they beat him and his back was bloody. They put a scarlet robe on him and they put a, that crown of thorns on his head and then they mocked him. They said, oh, you're a king. And they made fun of the fact that he claimed to be a king. So they, and after his beating, after the trials, before Pilate, they took Jesus to the hill outside the city called Golgotha. And on that hill, they took nails, much, much larger than these. They took those nails and they nailed Jesus to the cross through his hands and through his feet. But let me tell you something. The nails, is that, that's not what held Jesus to the cross. Jesus stayed on that cross because he loved us. He loved you and he loved me. And he knew that that payment for sin needed to take place. So Jesus stayed on the cross for us with those nails in his hands and in his feet. He endured that pain. After Jesus had been on the cross for a while, the soldiers came by to check on the men. They saw that Jesus was already dead. They didn't want to take any chances. And so one of the soldiers took a spear and they thrust it into the side of Jesus to make sure that he was dead. The men did not kill Jesus. Jesus gave up his life willingly. When it was evening, a rich man named Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, came and asked for the body of Christ. They wanted, he wanted to bury him. And so he took the body of Jesus and he took it to a new tomb. And he wrapped the body of Christ in linen cloth and he placed him in that new tomb. And Joseph went away sad because his Lord was dead. Does the story end there with Joseph walking away sad? What is in the egg? A stone. They put a stone in front of Christ's tomb. It was probably much, much, much larger than this. In fact, it probably weighed more than a car very 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 heavy stone and they put two two soldiers in front of that stone to guard it but the those soldiers were no match for the angel of the lord 
And the angel of the Lord came and the soldiers were so afraid, the Bible tells us, that they fainted. And the, the angel rolled back the stone. What was inside? What was inside behind that stone? The Bible tells us on the third day, Christ rose from the dead. He conquered sin. He conquered death. He rose from the dead. Women came to the tomb wanting to put oils on the body of Jesus because they loved him. And when they got there, they saw the angel and the angel said, don't be afraid. He is not here for he has risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And when they came and saw the place where the Lord lay, it was empty. We can rejoice because that tomb was empty. Jesus is alive. He lives. He is reigning forever. And because of his sacrifice, his death on the cross and his resurrection, we can live forever too. Sin is the sad part of the story. Sin is the part that separates us from God and keeps us from having a right relationship from him. Sin is the part that we all have. Sin is the reason that Christ came and died. But the story doesn't have to end sad. Because Christ rose, we can have forgiveness for our sin. The Bible says if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. The Bible says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you want forgiveness for your sin, just ask. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin. Call upon him and you will be saved.